Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, today we're going to be talking about tools that plein air painting artists should have. Now there are many different types of plein air painters. Some people just like to get a quick uh, up and go urban sketching set. Others do a full oil painting setup. And some people are kind of in between with, um, you know, maybe a more elaborate watercolor setup. Some people venture and try acrylics outside and you're welcome to do that, but they dry fairly quickly. Just keep that in mind unless you're using something like a retarder medium or an open acrylic paint to give you some more time. But today we're gonna look at some tools, some things that I think would help you on your journeys outdoors doing art. So some of these might seem a little obvious and some of them might not actually apply to you depending on where and when you're painting. Now for me, we're in North Carolina uh, and there are some things that I certainly don't wanna go out painting without and I will show you some of those things right now, okay? Sunscreen. Yeah, this is a BFD. You want to put this on or you're going to, you know, toast yourself. You know, it's, it's sunny out there. It can get hot out there. Sunscreen's a good idea. Also, when you're living in a place like here, now when we go visit my wife in California, you don't need this, but here you need bug spray. You're going to want to put some bug spray on or you're going to get eaten alive. Very important. Next thing, something to consider. You're painting outside. You may or may not be in direct sunlight. Okay, and, and as you know, the sun moves, right? The sun moves in the sky. I mean, it's, it, the sun's not moving, we're moving, but you get the idea, this isn't a science lesson. Um, since the earth is flat, we have to follow the sun. So with that being said, you're gonna need something to protect your eyes. Now you might be like, well, I got that covered, I wear sunglasses, uh, 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 uh. no sunglasses. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The sunglasses are gonna completely throw off all your colors. You won't be able to mix colors properly. You're not even looking at the thing properly because you've got your polarized lenses on. And even if you tilt your head just a little bit, the whole thing changes. So, I just did a Katie thing with my voice going up. The whole thing changes. Um, so, what is a girl to do? That's what I ask myself. Well, you need a brimmed hat, okay? Cowboy hat, baseball hat, even a derby. I don't care. Something that covers your forehead that will also kind of help take a little of the sun off your face, but it will allow you to look without that glaring sunlight in your eyes, without wearing sunglasses, which will completely taint and contaminate what the colors you're seeing will look like. Does that make sense to everybody? What about you, John? Okay, John said yes. What else, what else do you need? What else aren't you considering? Very important thing, often overlooked, often forgotten. You need to bring, and I'm pretty sure you have one with you, but are you gonna use it? You need to bring a camera. Yeah, you ever heard that saying, take a picture, it'll last longer? Well, we're sitting there talking about that sun moving around. Guess what? You're gonna go out there, you're gonna start painting, and that sun's gonna start to move. And even if the sun didn't move, right? That moment in time, you're probably not gonna be able to capture it again, just that, you know, even, even like Monet had trouble finishing paintings where he would take his boat out, and he'd start painting, he'd be like, oh, I'll finish this tomorrow, and then he would never find the same spot again in the water. It might be a little easier to, I guess, dig into the earth and say, okay, may, or X marks the spot if it's a place that, you know, you're allowed to do that. But it will be much easier and much simpler when you establish what you want to paint, that you take that big old honking phone out of your pocket, oh, mom, uh, and take a picture of what you are trying to paint. This will allow you to go back home and complete an unfinished painting. You never know when it will start raining. You never know when there'll be little kids around or leprechauns. Things pop up and they annoy you and you don't want to paint anymore. So you'll be able to take that painting with you. It's almost like a little insurance policy that if it takes you longer than you're expecting or you aren't able to finish it, having a photograph to use as a reference later will allow you to finish it outside, uh, <laughs> outside of the outside. It'll allow you to finish it inside later on, okay? Couple of things for you oil painters out there. So important, so important that you are still cleaning your brushes. I am a stickler for this. Look, I would love it for you to ruin every single one of your brushes and have to buy new ones, but that's not what I'm up here telling you, right? I, I want you to invest in good quality tools and create beautiful art. That's what I like to see. I like to see quality, beautiful art. So how are you supposed to clean those oil painting brushes in the field? Well, I like to use palette cups. These palette cups are great. They have screw on lids and you can just fill this with some of your paint thinner, right? You're not gonna give it the full deep clean, okay? You're just trying to get the paint out. You're gonna wipe it off with a paper towel or a cloth, and then you're gonna try to get some of the grit out, and then when you get those brushes home, you're gonna give them a scrub with that Chelsea Classical Studio Lavender Olive Oil Soap. That's what's gonna give it over the top. But if you wait, things will start to get gunked up. So start the cleaning process as you're wrapping up your painting in the field. 
very important. Plus, you can bring additional mediums with you because usually the pallet cups are available in onesies, twosies, and you can get as many as you want. So, I like that. This is mostly, again, for you oil painters out there, but maybe some watercolor acrylic painters. If you are going to be painting out in the field, especially if you're going deep sea painting, I just made that term up because it probably doesn't matter. If you're going to be out in the field, far from your car, walking around, you're going to need a wet canvas carrier, yeah, especially oil paint, baby. That stuff's not getting dry anytime soon. So a wet canvas carrier, what that does is it allows you to hold your wet artwork. Now you notice this, we set it up here, the artwork is facing in. That will protect it, right? I'm going to put this in a place where Will can hopefully get a shot. And if you're doing more than one painting, you can see that these things are really great because they adjust, they'll sandwich together without touching, and they will allow you um, to carry your wet canvases without worrying about them bumping into something or if you drop them, them falling into a grassy area and ruining the art. The idea is that it protects the art. So if this was to tilt over, the art's still okay. You can put one on the other side. These little doohickeys over here adjust to the size of your canvas. Um, eh. Oh, I didn't unscrew it all the way. That's right. And then if you have a larger canvas, you can put the larger canvas on the other side. It holds up to two. Wet canvas carrier, uh, a tool that's very good if you are going to be painting in oil paint. Or maybe you are doing watercolor and you're using a block and it's not fully dry yet. You can throw the block on this. That's up to you. Okay? Now, in my opinion, one of the single most important things that anybody that wants to paint, whether it's indoors, outdoors, on the go, on vacation, I think one of the most important things that you have is a ready to go setup. So if you're a studio painter, you should have a studio. Or if you would like to be a studio painter but don't have room for a studio, you should have an area dedicated to art. When that inspiration hits you, you don't, man, I can't tell you, like, I wanna paint, but I gotta get my easel out from under the bed, I gotta schlep my oil paints out from the garage. I mean, it's a whole setup, and by the time you get set up, you're kind of out of the mood, if you even bother to go through the whole process anyway when you start thinking about what's involved. If you wanna do art, inspiration's gonna hit you at any moment. It's very bizarre how that works sometimes. So having your artwork ready to go, your art supplies ready to go is very important. Now, plein air painting is no exception. So I think it's very important that you have a to-go bag, ready to go. You can put in all kinds of things. Here, let's look, what do we have here? We have, uh, you know, we have this um, suntan lotion. We've got our, uh, you know, our bug spray, palette cup, hat, what canvas carrier. All right, this is getting a little cumbersome. Now, what if I told you that there was something out there that could take all this accoutrement and kind of consolidate it? Would that sound good? Something a little easier to get around with? All right, I'm going to show you some tools that I think are a lot more realistic in terms of going out in the field and bringing all this stuff with you. Uh, again, oil painting especially, but also for you watercolor painters or acrylic painters out there, or even pastel painters. I shouldn't forget pastel painters. I can't believe I forgot that. Painting in pastel, having something to protect the canvas, very important. So, what if I told you that there was something that would not only give you a surface to paint on, but it would also act as a wet canvas carrier, hold your supplies, hold your bug spray, hold your hat, hold your hand, makes you feel comfortable. Uh, it, it, will, it will have all those things in there in one nice location, consolidate. I think that that's nice. I think that that's good. It's a to-go thing. Let's take a look. Welcome to the Plein Air Painters Survivor's Toolkits by Soho. What we have here is a Peshad box and we have a French easel, okay? Two really reliable things you can bring with you in the field that will accommodate a lot of these things we talked about. Now, there are some differences between the two of them, okay? The Peshad box, I really like, especially if I'm painting on something like panel. Now, you might be looking at this. Well, let's open it up, okay? So this is going to have lots of room in it. You're going to be able to um, store your supplies. It has this piece on the back that kind of acts as a little side tray here. You got a lot going on. You got your pallet space in here. This is actually a, um, a paper towel holder. I'm not going to get into the nit and gritty of everything that goes into this, but as you can see, it will hold your supplies. And also, it has these special drawers here where you can hold several different panels. So you can leave them in there, you can put them in there dry, right? So like, you, you know, when you're, when you're traveling out there, you just have this one thing, you have your dry panels in there. And then when you're done, it acts as a wet canvas carrier for multiple size panels. And all that information is listed in the links below uh, where we put um, links to these things where you can see what size panels will fit. There's adapters to make them fit smaller panels, whatnot. And they will work with wet canvases as well, wet 
canvas panels, I should say. Now, if you want to paint on stretch canvas, um, you know, this can accommodate a smaller stretch canvas, but it's really, in my opinion, designed best for panels. Uh, as you can see here, this will come up. You can put your canvas in there, your panels in there, and uh, call it a day. Uh, also, if you prefer to paint standing up rather than sitting down, because this does make a really nice table easel, um, you also can get a special tripod. This is a really heavy duty tripod. Awesome tripod, beautiful tripod. Um, that goes along with this Pashad box. I mean, look at that. It's like straight out of B&H. I like that. Has the nice uh, soft grips, telescoping le legs, has the um, level bubble in there for you. This will work also with the camera. You know, it, it, it's multi-purpose, not just for um, the Pashad box. But then what you're gonna do is set this up on the field, and then underneath here, what you have under here is a place to attach it directly to that tripod, okay? So if you like the Pashad box and all that, that nice and small, like a little suitcase, a little uh, briefcase, I should say, uh, that's a really good option. Now, if you wanna paint on stretch canvas, you don't wanna deal with tripods, you wanna do something a little bit more traditional, something more French, you like French? I like French. My wife's quarter French, which makes my daughter an eighth French, and my son too. Okay, so the final thing, which uh, I'm pretty sure most people have heard of, it's probably one of the most traditional tools for plein air painters, is the artist French easel. Now I say that these are tools any plein air artist should have. I'm not saying that you need this, I'm saying it's something available if you haven't thought about it, it might make your life easier, and that's what I'm all about, trying to make your life easier. So French easel, similar to the Peshad box, you don't need to stand up. Like, I don't know if you're like me, I, I, I like to sit, just in general, I don't even like standing up here. Um, so if you have a place where you can put this on a table, great. You don't have to put the legs up and you have a upright working surface that you can paint on, right? Beautiful. If you do want to open it up, you have these legs that come out and it will act just sort of like the uh, tripod almost all in one. Uh, these things usually come with uh, here, so lots of storage room. You have this traditional wooden pallet. You've got sections in here. You also have a little bit of space in the back to put a few things. You're going to be able to hold a lot of things and these boxes are great for uh, any medium, oil, um, acrylic, watercolor. If you're going to do watercolor, whether you want to stand, whether you want to sit, doesn't matter. All you do is you just fold this flat again so you can have a flat watercolor surface. Uh, pastel, uh, for pastel I believe these things will even telescope a little bit above 90 degrees because when you're doing pastel painting you generally want your surface to be slightly facing towards you so that the dust falls away from your surface and not on it which will well I guess make it dusty um, so a really convenient tool to have and then finally uh, one of the other things that I want to mention is that this is a built-in wet canvas carrier for stretch canvas so what you're gonna do is essentially when you're finished painting just turn your painting around or if you want to just be extra careful, you don't have to turn your painting around, um, and uh, and leave it on here, and you can carry it away all in one with a handle. Uh, these also have a shoulder strap to help you. Uh, all of them have shoulder straps to help you uh, carry them. And you don't want to just hold it. But these tools are here. I mean, if, if, if you've never even considered investing in one, I hope that you think about it if it's, if it's the right tool for you. I'm all about making sure that it's something that's gonna help you on your artistic journeys because that's the point of all my videos is not to sell you a French easel. It's I want you doing art. I love art. I wanna see more art. I wanna see something I've never seen before. Blow me away. So if this video was helpful for you, I hope you drop me one of these. Please subscribe to our channel to see more of my punam and other videos we do with lots of other people. And uh, ring the bell to be notified when we post new videos because we've always got things going on here at Jerry's Autorama just for you. And of course, if you want to see more of my nonsense, you can uh, follow me on Instagram at Mike, not Jerry. That's my, uh, that's my code name, yeah. If you're not familiar, you know, the story goes, everybody assumes any male that works here, which is also wrong. Uh, his name is Jerry, um, but uh, my grandfather Jerry, uh, who's no longer with us, um, uh, I, I don't want to be confused with him, so it's Mike, not Jerry. Of course, then I named my son after my grandfather, so we have another Jerry, and he's going to be Jerry, not Mike, not Jerry, but that's later. Let's not worry about that. You can just follow me at Mike, not Jerry, where you can see a few photos of him, and I like to post art stuff, art inspiration stuff, art memes. It's art-related for the most part because that's what I do, that's, that's what I live and breathe. Hopefully just like you, or at least part of you, a little part of me is always gonna be with you.
heard that. Uh, so follow me on Instagram if you'd like to see some of the stuff that I'm up to. And enjoy the rest of your tomorrow. Who says that? This guy. Should we end it like that? Or is it too weird? It's not pretty inspirational. It's not inspirational? <laughs> no, I said it sounded Oh, yeah? 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 Yeah, go enjoy paint. the rest of your tomorrow. You are my people. My siblings in art.